Hey YouTube man, it's Gabe with just another fan TV. Back at you on the video at the content of this video. Go ahead and smash that like button on the content of this channel. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, um, the Ravens lose a, um, a game that really shouldn't even be too much expected from, but they lost 27 to 16 to the Bengals. Um, it kind of is what it is when I was watching the game. You know what I mean? The Ravens chose to, I guess, rest guys for the playoffs. A lot of guys didn't play. You know, get Mark Andrews, Tyler Huntley, um, Brandon Stevens kind of had an illness going into the week, so that wasn't really that much surprising. But, you know, J.K. Dobbins, they, they rested a lot of guys, okay? Um, there were some positives about this game. There were some negatives about this game. We're going to kind of get into both sides of that. Uh, but, you know, I won't tell you that it was all sunshine and rainbows, and I'm not going to tell you that it was all doom and gloom. It wasn't. You know, this game was it had a little bit of both in it, a lot of both in it, all right? But first, we're going to start out with positive, uh, the standout performers. Uh, we're going to do some positives on the offense and deep inside ball, and then we get to the negatives, all right? So stand up performance, first guy I want to mention is Anthony Brown, right? Now, I know what you're going to say. Oh, two interceptions, a fumble for uh, a, a touchdown. I know. I know. Right? 286 yards for Anthony Brown. He dealt with at least double-digit drops a day. If, if, at the very minimum, there were eight drops. At the very minimum. At the, at the high, it could have been 12, honestly. The Ravens dropped a bunch of passes today. Okay? But we're talking about an undrafted free agent, his first ever start, versus the uh, AFC North champion, uh, you know, Super Bowl runner-up last year, Cincinnati Bengals. This was no slouch. This was no easy game to walk into. And Anthony Brown played okay. He was all right. He did better than um, you could probably hope for a guy in that kind of situation. And you could say, well, what did he do anything different than Tyler Huntley? I'm going to tell you what he did differently. I saw multiple passes that he threw that Tyler Huntley wouldn't even attempt. Okay? We're talking about the two back shoulder throws to uh, Sammy Watkins. Yes, Sammy Watkins fumbled on one of them. It is what it is. Okay? But just a pure attempt on that, and he completed both of them. We're talking about the jump ball to Isaiah Lackett. Like, Isaiah Lackett like goes up and makes a play. He's not attempting that pass, okay? Just the pure arm talent that he has is better than Huntley's, all right? And I'm not here to bash Tyler Huntley up and down. I'm not. But what I'm saying is Anthony, uh, Anthony Brown is a pure and better thrower of the football than Tyler Huntley, flat out. And the passing game looked better. With Anthony Brown and Tyler Huntley. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be every single week or he's the long-term solution at backup quarterback. I'm just telling you what I saw today, right? That's my opinion on it. I like what Anthony Brown did. Like I said, let's think about who this guy is. An undrafted free agent, okay? Rookie, first career start in Cincinnati versus the team that is currently the AFC North champion. Versus a team, versus a defense that's good. Versus a defense that didn't arrest anybody how the Ravens chose to rest the uh, guys today. He played the real Bengals defense. And he did okay. He was fine. I, I had no issues with Anthony Brown, so he stood out to me. All right. Offense. Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely had eight catches for 103, okay? He did have a couple drops, and I'm going to let him escape that. But the point being is this. Isaiah Likely showed up and showed out, okay? This is why guys like me have always been saying Isaiah Likely is a he can be a star in this offense for the Ravens, right? It's also why, why I say even when Mark Andrews comes back, Isaiah likely needs to play uh, 75, 80% of the snaps, okay? Taking Isaiah likely off the field just because you have Mark Andrews with uh, our, with uh, the other pass options that we have doesn't make any sense. He's too talented of a player to play as little as he does coming into today's game. There have been plenty of games where he's less, where he's on the field less than 50%, less than 40% of the stats, where he's split the snaps with Josh Oliver. Okay? Me, personally, I don't care how well Isaiah likely blocks. He blocks well enough to be on the field when it matters. All right? You take him off the field, you're taking a threat away that the defense has to be aware of. Not saying they're scared of Isaiah likely, nothing like that. Of course not. But they have to be aware of him. They have to be. Because he is a threat. You got to be aware of the guy. He's out there. Um, so I love what I saw from Isaiah Likely today. Um, hopefully, that will mean Greg Roman will actually play this guy alongside of Mark Andrews like we all thought would happen. And it, this won't be like a, oh, it's third down, so they're on the field. No, every down. If Mark Andrews plays 90% of the snaps, which I think he's somewhere around 85 90% of the snaps, um, Isaiah Likely needs to be around 75 80 Okay? He doesn't need to be off the field very much. Very, very honestly. Now, other side of the ball. The, the, the biggest surprise of this game, even bigger than Anthony Brown, Daryl Worley surprised me today. And I was impressed with Daryl Worley. He played hard today. All right. So five tackles, two pass deflections officially for Daryl Worley. He did give up a touchdown to Jamar Chase, but this is Jamar Chase, one of the, what, top five receivers in the NFL, top seven, um, something like that. 
on a one-on-one -on -one ball, right? But let's also talk about before the touchdown how Jamal Chase got, got deep, Darrell Williams affected the pass. Let's talk about after the touchdown that he's matched up with Jamar Chase down the field again and is still playing tight coverage on him. Um, he had a hard hit on T. Higgins. Some Bengals fans were crying about saying that hit was was dirty. It wasn't. Shoulder into the in, into the into the stomach. Like T. Higgins got the wind knocked out of him. I'm glad he's okay. Nothing dirty about that hit. I know everybody's kind of sensitive after you know Demar Hamlin and you know we're glad everything's okay with him. Okay, excuse me. But that was a clean football hit. Uh, Daryl Woolley was playing hard today. He was all over the field, and I loved what I saw from Daryl Woolley today. Now. I'm not getting carried away. He is not cornerback two. He's not cornerback three or four. Nothing like that. But today, in this game, he had a good one. Just calling it like it is, okay? Um, also, Roquan Smith, man. 16 tackles, 12 solos. There's not too much left to say about this guy. He's all over the field. He fills the stat sheet. And like I, I've said this before, he fills the stat sheet, but you feel his impact. There's some guys you like, dang, he had this many tackles, and only feel like he did nothing. No, Roquan Smith, you feel the tackles, bro. Like, you notice him. Okay, he's there again. He's there again. Like, you notice that Roquan Smith. So, shout out to him. Uh, only thing I would dislike is it's not anything on his end. It's the fact that the Ravens put him back in the game after he was injured. I didn't like that. Okay, he was hurt, possibly head injury, whatever. They cleared him to come back in. Cool. But don't, you cleared him. All right, I'm glad that's fine. But don't clear him to come back in the game. All right, the game was already out of reach. It's like 27-16. Let him sit down. We're going to need him next week. I didn't like that decision. To me, that was a bad decision. Okay. Now, that's my stand-up performance. Make sure you guys give me the stand-up performance in the comments. I understand if you don't have any, you want to just say, hey, look, man, we lost the game. Died up. Cool. All right. But my thing is, if you went into this game, you saw the inactives. You saw Tyler Huntley, Mark Andrews, you know, a bunch of other guys inactive. And you thought this was a game that you were going to be upset about if the Ravens lost. You got to reevaluate how you were thinking going into the game. Okay, this was it. This was an expected L. I just didn't want them to get embarrassed. And they didn't get embarrassed. They, they played well, honestly. Um, in, in some phases, obviously, they had a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes, all right? Now, positives offensively, we kind of talked about them a little bit. But I will name another guy, Key Drake, I thought was really well. He thought he was really explosive. I would like to see some Key Drake next week. Um, in the past, in that running game, obviously, they will get J.K. Dobbins back. You know, he they, they, the Ravens decided to rest him today. Um, Gus had left the game with a head injury, so um, hopefully Gus will be all right. He's ready to go. If he's not, I'm glad to get. I'm glad the Ravens got Kenyon Drake. Okay. Um, what else on offense? Um, I thought Anthony Brown settled into the game. Like I said, he it started off a little rough for him, but he settled in as time went along. I thought that was positive. Um, I thought Charlie Colon looked pretty well in um, in the limited targets he got. That's cool. You know, he wasn't nothing crazy or nothing like that, but I thought he was good. Um, Sammy Watkins showed some explosives on the outside. Now, that catch and run that led to the fumble, that's disappointing. That's very, very disappointing. The Ravens cannot have these kind of turnovers in the playoffs. It's going to kill them. Absolutely kill them. Now, defensively, positives, okay? Um, I mentioned Darrell Woolley already. I want to mention David Ojabo. David Ojabo gets a strip sack on Joe Barrow. That's huge, bro. Now, listen, that doesn't mean that this... Um, <laughs> Uh, the old Jabba versus Pickens debate will die because of one play, but it's good to see him get on the board, right? He was known for his strip sacks at Michigan, and he brought that here, and he's already doing the air, all right? That's great. The Ravens played him in a more expansive role today, and he looked he looked good out there. I'm not going to lie to you, all right? So I'm happy for David Ojabo. That's a major positive, okay? Uh, Justin Houston, Odafi Owe can combine for a sack. That's a positive. I mentioned Earl Woolley. That's a positive, okay? Um, the Bengals start off this game red hot. I believe the Bengals, yeah, the, half, the score at halftime was 24-7, to 7, okay? 24-7. to 7. The final score of this game was 27-16. to 16. That means the Bengals scored three points in the second half, all right? The defense clamped up in the second half, all right? Um, so that's a positive. So, you know what I mean? I, I'm a fan of all of that, okay? Now, let's be honest. Let's get to the negatives. Offense. I know Anthony Brown was the quarterback. Way too many drops. I think I mentioned it earlier. The drops at minimum was an eight. They might have had as many as twelve. I know I didn't really go through and count, but Demarcus Robinson had at least five by himself. King and Drake had a couple. Um, I believe Charlie Kohler had a drop. Okay, Isaiah Lightly might have had a couple drops. Okay, that can't happen, bro. You got to love and possess the football. Got to take care of the ball. That means that means don't drop it when it hits your hands. That means helping out your rookie quarterback, even if the ball is a little behind you. 
catch it. Catch it, Demarcus Robinson. I know, I know that first inter- or second interception, I think, on the drag route. It's a little behind you. Make a play for your quarterback and catch the ball, bro. Catch it, please. All right, that might not be fair, whatever. That's a make the play for your quarterback. Catch that football. All right. Um, but you know, the Ravens ran the ball, they ran the ball pretty well, even though Anthony Brown is not a threat to run the football. Okay. So, given the fact he wasn't a threat and the Ravens still ran the ball pretty effectively, it's good news. Okay. Um, but any more negatives on offense? Um, yeah, I think it, I think it was honestly just the drops, bro. Um, the Reds on offense wasn't that good again, but at this point, we know that it's not really too much to be. Uh, I mean, I guess it is something to be excited about, but not to be surprised about. I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right, um, but they did score Reds on touchdown, so clap it up for that. King Drake got in there. Um, now defense, positive. Um, sorry, negatives for the defense. Okay, um, it was too easy to start the game. Um, too too soft in the coverage, uh, giving up too much. Honestly, um, and then I did like the fact that even though Daryl Ward he held his own for large parts of the day, he didn't need to be one on one with Jamar Chase. Okay, let's have some awareness right there, Mike McDonald. I know you want to blitz Joe Burrow and get him on his back sometimes. I get that, but let's not do it at the expense of leaving Daryl Ward one on one with Jamar Chase. Okay, sometimes it worked, most times it did. All right, Jamar Chase is that guy. All right, that's a certain guy where when we played him the first time, we let him have everything underneath. To see if they, 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 they can be patient. We kind of did that this game a little bit too, but I wasn't a fan of that. All right. Secondly, and I think the most important thing, the pass rush struggles with any quarterback that has the slightest bit of pocket mobility. Okay. Joe Burrow is a good mover in the pocket. I'm not saying Joe Burrow's a statue. I'm not saying he's slow, he's stiff, whatever. Cool. He's good in the pocket. But I'm so sick and tired of the Ravens having these guys. In their grass, and they're just slipping out. Now they're finding guys down the field making throws. Joe Barrow did that in the first quarter at least three times. All right. Now they got they got on top of his second half and actually got and, and got some sacks on Joe Barrow. Great. They so an issue that I'm calling a negative. They corrected it. They fixed it. Props to them. All right. Um, but that is something to look out for in the playoffs, bro. If you have Joe Barrow and a chance to take him down and you miss, that's a momentum swing in the game. It just is. That's a hundred percent fact right there. Okay. Um, so that's my negative for the defense. All right. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I got, man. Stand up performance, positive negatives for each side of the ball. I'm not gonna be too hot, ramp, ramped up and hyped up about this game. The bank uh the Bengals should have won this game. It was all right, you know, for large parts of the game, um, it, it led the Ravens going to get blown out, especially in the first half. But the second half the Ravens went toe to toe. Second half, the Ravens outscored the Bengals, you know, nine to three. No moral victories. I'm not calling that a moral victory. I'm just telling you the fact of what happened. All right, the Bengals should have did way better versus the Ravens, and they didn't. Anthony Brown was having some success out there. Did the Bengals probably miss a couple more interceptions? For sure they did. You know, the ball didn't bounce their way, but you know it is what it is in that situation. All right, um, could the, Ra- the Ravens had opportunities to potentially score more points. And it didn't happen. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to be super down and upset and, and mad about this game. A game that the Ravens, you know, were expected to lose, especially when you see that they didn't they chose not to play anybody. Just a fact. Now the big, big um elephant in the room is do we get number eight back next week? Because I like our chances versus this Bengals team in this performance with Lamar Jackson back there. I love it. Bring the Bengals on. I'm glad the Patriots lost to the Bills. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather play Cincy in the wild call. You're familiar with them, things like that. Visional game. Boom. You're going to be ready to go. Right? I'd, I'd rather play them. Especially if Lamar Jackson comes back. You know, if Lamar Jackson has the slightest bit of um, timing and anything like that, I know he's probably going to be rusty for a little bit. But if he can step back and be Lamar Jackson again, Ravens have a shot to win that game next week. They just do. And I'm being 100% honest. I'm not. You know what I mean? That's, that, that's, that's objectivity right there. I'm dead serious. I guess have a shot to win that game. All right. Um, but look, that's my thoughts about the game, man. Give me your thoughts about the game. Like I said, if y'all have stand-up performance, go ahead and drop them. If you don't, I understand. All right. You know what I mean? But for me personally, I'm not going to get too wild up and upset about that game. I'm just not. All right. The Ravens finished the regular season at 10 and 7. Um, I think when I started this season, I predicted them to go um, at the very, very high end. It was 14 and 3. That was if everything went perfect. And on the low end, I, I had 11 and 6. So I was off by one. Um, but I really thought they would finish somewhere like 12 and 5. That's really the way I thought they would finish, okay? 
Uh, but they lost a lot of games this year that they shouldn't have. And that really that 12 and 5 probably should have happened. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. Ravens Spencer's regular season 10 and 7. And uh, we're on to the playoffs, bro. One and done. It's that time of the year. Uh, give me your thoughts about this game, man. Give me your thoughts on how you feel us going into the playoffs. All right, we'll talk about it in the comments, man. It's your boy Gabe, which is on the Fan TV. I'm out.